Hi friends, Denise here. Welcome back. I am making a ship with me video a little bit faster than I anticipated. Yay. I have some stuff to ship out today that has sold in the last 24 hours. My last video I made after President's Day and today is actually Thursday. So whatever sold kind of Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm shipping out right now. Let's get started. The first item that I sold is this Barefoot Dreams Cozy Chic Light Open Cardigan Hooded. I This is the second Barefoot Dreams piece I've picked up. I did pay up for this at my honey hole, and by pay up, I want to say... I purchased this for around $8. I had it listed in my closet for $48. Someone offered me $42 and I happily accepted. You know, I love wearing black, but I don't love photographing and selling black items because it just shows every little thing. So this also has a little tag down here in case maybe the tag is missing from the top. This is another way to um, recognize and determine if something is barefoot dreams. What's funny about this is that I hear, I, I watch so many YouTube videos of resellers and they love finding and selling Barefoot Dreams. It does sound like it's not as available as it once was and potentially even maybe not as hot of a seller as it once was. But I've had this in my closet, I would say for two weeks, so... I'm happy with that sell through. I also have another um, of their cardigans. It's the bamboo and it's an ombre, kind of a cream color to a gray color. And it's a small medium, whereas this is a medium, just a straight medium. I am happy to get this off to the person who purchased it. I'm just trying to get all little signs of lint off of it. So what I found was funny because the first one that I picked up was a little bit of a different style. It doesn't have pockets. It kind of has the waterfall front. And like I said, it's a cream, it's a cream color to a gray ombre. And I've heard so many people talk about barefoot dreams. And I've had that other cardigan in my closet for approximately maybe like six weeks now. And I just expected it to like post and fly out of my closet because I've heard so much about it and that was my first time purchasing it. And so I'm actually very thrilled that this sold because I did get a little taste of the right Barefoot Dreams purchasing it. I think um, the Ombre one is just doesn't speak to as wide of an audience. It's also a smaller size, so I'm assuming that's why it just it hasn't sold as quickly as this one did, which really just makes me, it's good. It's good to see, you know, like, oh, this is gonna sell, but it may take a few months. Whereas if you find the solid color in a bigger size in the cozy chic light, it's probably gonna sell a lot faster. I don't really have a gauge for that, but until I pick up more and sell more, I am shipping this and it fits perfectly in here. This is uh, a box from USPS and this is the 1097 box. So it's actually not as big as a medium flat rate box. And it just like fits this sweater perfectly. I don't have to add any additional materials to the box, which always I love that. 
You know, sometimes if you put an item in a box and there's a lot of space, it will get crushed. I have seen boxes get crushed of things that I've ordered, like a lightweight pair of pants in a box like this. It's just not really the best way to go. The best way to go for something like that would be with one of these tie-back envelopes. Sweater, a little bit bulkier. I probably could have fit it in an envelope, but this box is actually perfect. A little bit more secure. The next item I posted days ago, I picked these up at the bins. These are Marameco for Target napkins. Now, they came in a four pack for the launch. This is what it looks like. They came in a four pack and What's interesting, it was that it was four different prints in the four pack. Well, I picked up four at the bins. One of them actually had a hole and I listed that in the, oh, it's right here. It had a little tiny hole in it. It's really not very noticeable. These are in really beautiful shape. So back to the prints. There were four prints in the set when you purchased it from Target, but, and here's the other print. I picked up two, a quantity of two, of two different prints. So someone must have bought two sets and they preferred the other two prints and so, you know, donated these two prints and kept the other two prints. I posted these because they had the whole, I saw them going for new with tags for upwards of really honestly like $60 and even selling pretty high. Even for something like a Target collaboration, um, you can still get a really great price for it. I had these posted for $38. The buyer offered me $22. I counter offered with $30 and they accepted the $30. I am shipping, I use tissue paper, but I purchased some smaller kind of half the size that I normally use for times when I have to ship smaller items. So I got these at the bins. When you purchase linens at the bins, and I know it's not the same, uh, you know, it's this is really geographically dependent, but at my bins, and my bins, when I say my bins, that's Denver, Colorado, the bins I go to, it's $1.49 for hard goods, clothing. It's 69 cents a pound for bedding, and linens. I was able to purchase these as a linen, so I probably paid 40 cents for these. There's no way these weigh a pound. And let's see. These are some fun. Ooh. You are kind. So I'm really excited. I, that, that is a really nice profit margin and I rescued what I consider to be a very lovely item. So this size is a little bit smaller for a Tyvek envelope and seems excessive to use a padded envelope that I picked up mainly for shipping on eBay because if something weighs under a pound, it's better to ship it first class and when you ship something first class, you can't use priority mail packaging. So I had to purchase some items to mail things in. A professional composting situation, like, you know, by your city or county, this will actually break down. So that's a win-win. The next item I sold, I haven't even put these away in the bin yet. These Patagonia, I believe they're called the Stand Up Shorts. This colorway is, I call it camel. It reminds me of Carhartt. It feels like Carhartt, a little bit more of a canvas, heavier short. These shorts honestly will last forever. They don't even retail that high, which I love that about Patagonia. They retail for $58. I mean, not cheap, but not super expensive. 
for something that is such good quality that is going to honestly last for a long time. I have sold, this is the third pair of these that I've sold. I have another pair that I don't have posted yet that I am really anxious to get in my closet now. I want to say maybe these were washed a handful of times. They are pretty much in like new condition. They had one tiny little bleach spot um, in the interior of the seat of these, which of course I highlighted and it's not noticeable at all. So I just love selling Patagonia. Next up is this beautiful, it's kind of a salmon color, Garnet Hill, 100% cashmere. This sweater is retailing on their website right now for $128. There is a little bit, I mean, very, very minor light pilling on this sweater. There are no holes, which is super important to really check when you're selling cashmere. I had this in my closet for $78. And I'll tell you the reason why I priced it that way. One, it sells retail for $200 and or close to $200. And two, and this is exceptional quality Garnet Hill here, especially cashmere, another one of those just like heirloom pieces you'll have in your closet. And two, Really what drove me to list it at that price point was that it was still current on the website. This color wasn't current, which actually makes it sometimes a little bit more appealing to a buyer because it's not something you can buy online. Sometimes people may have had their eye on a particular item and then before you know it, it goes out of stock and you really wanted that color. So for this item, I did send out an offer. I sent out an offer of 15% off, which was a price of $63. And well, the buyer accepted. When you send out an offer the way I did, just a straight offer, I like to call it, you also have to decide if you'd like to what level of reduced shipping you'd like to provide. And for this, I offered 15% off and $5.95 shipping, which made a cost to me of $1.50 in shipping. Now this has recently come up in discussion. There are ways to make offers to people without having to offer reduced shipping if that's something that appeals to you. And one way to do that is actually to create a bundle and send an offer that way. When you send an offer to a buyer via bundle, even if it's just one item, you can bundle one item, you don't have to offer reduced shipping. To me, actually, I, I do like putting this raffia ribbon on items that I sell for kind of more than $50 if it seems appropriate. So the way to get around not having to offer reduced price shipping but to offer a person who's interested a deal on the item is to create a bundle and then send them an offer that way. I just sent an offer via the offer to likers button and when I did that it prompted me it actually <clears throat> forces you to offer reduced shipping and so I chose the $5.95 option. You'll see an item coming up I offered $4.99 shipping. I will say I very, 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 very rarely offer free shipping, but there are occasions where something has been sitting. It's an item that I picked up the bins and I'm selling for more than $100. So I decide to get this to move. I think free shipping would be the way to go with this offer. The person accepted that and they're getting a great deal. The next item I sold, I'm not gonna be actually packaging on camera. There are these boots. 
They're El Vaccaro, and I picked these up. I paid up for these. I paid $50 for these at a small thrift store in my town that I don't really go to that often, but I do like the offerings that they have. They do have a lot of boutique items. This is a really soft, buttery leather. I do have them stuffed with newsprint. On the side, it says um, the Apache. It's like an 80s styling. The great thing about these boots is that a version of them was sold by free people so when i find anything that is a collab with free people these boots retail for close to 500 dollars. and i thought i'm gonna take a chance i'm gonna spend 50 dollars on these simply due to condition and that they were a collab with free people not this particular one but a brown version and I listed them for $250 and comps on these honestly went up to about $475 with a lot more fringe on them. And when I say on these, I mean the brand and similar style boots, not these exact boots. I received an offer for $208 and the person had canceled the offer, like when I woke up in the morning. So I decided I was going to send out a, gosh... Uh, maybe 20% off offer. I sold these for $196. The person accepted the offer, and I also offered $499 shipping. So I paid $246 in shipping, and I sold them for $196. I bought them for $50. So my profit on these after posh fees and the shipping fees is $111. That makes me very happy. This other, this next item makes me very happy too. These are a pair of tie-dye joggers. I got them at the bins and I have said this many times if you watch my videos. The brand is ARX Lab, Arx Lab, and what caught my attention about them, I do like the a little bit more of a neutral tone tie-dye to them. What caught my attention was that they were made in the USA. And anytime I'm at the bins and I find made in the USA, I'm going to pick it up. Like, I don't really hesitate if it's an item in good condition. And that sort of mindset has really pro proven to be profitable for me. Like, I recently picked up that American Giant sweatshirt and it sold right away. Now, these sweatpants, like this. These brands are totally, this is totally new to me. I hadn't heard of it before. A lot of comps on Posh were selling for, you know, the $20 price range. But if you happen to find a colorway and a size that someone's interested in, people will pay up for them. Now, a side note, funny thing about these, two funny things about these sweatpants. One is on Friday, not even a week ago, I they were sitting in my closet for maybe two months. I took them to, they didn't even receive any likes in my closet in Posh, so I took them to my buy sell trade store. I thought, oh my goodness, these are so on point. I live in a college town, like these are perfect for buy sell trade. Well, buy sell trade didn't take them. I'm glad they didn't. So when I take items to buy, sell, trade, I don't remove the posting from my closet. These item, this item sold for $36. Now another tier to these selling that I think is very interesting to any of you that are resellers. These sweatpants had no likes in my closet. And I thought, oh, I'll take them to Plato's Closet. They'll buy them. I'll be done with them. I'll get five bucks for them. I got them at the bins. No big deal. Well, Plato's didn't take them. They got no traction in my closet. So I did what I talked about in my last video was I actually went in, I copied the listing, and I reposted these just a day ago. And by doing that, they sold the same day 
before asking, no offers, $36, and I originally had them in my closet for $28. It works. I don't know. There's like some weird psyche with some price point on items in Poshmark, like the Free People booties that I had in my closet for $15 that I just sold for $25 when I had them marked up to $32. It's like, I don't know what it is, but... It's the strangest thing, you guys. Like, I mark up an item, repost it, and it sells. I guess people don't like slamming deals. I don't know what it is. It's very strange. The next item I sold is something you'd expect to sell. A pair of Lululemon Hottie Hot shorts. These are white in really lovely, worn, washed condition. You know, they have just some little marks to them. They're not bright white anymore. I had them in my closet for $25, which is sort of that like price point for Lululemon where you're saying, you know, these aren't in perfect shape. I understand this. I want to give you a good deal because certain colors of hottie hot shorts, I'm not kidding you, sell for $150. These were not going to sell for anything that was super competitive to retail price. So I post them at 25 and I do list in the posting like, hey, these are $25 because of the condition. They're white. They don't have major stains, but they've been washed and you wash white enough times. It's going to look to be washed. So the buyer offered me $20 for these shorts and I sat on the offer for a little bit because as you know with Poshmark when someone makes an offer a notification also goes out to all the people who have liked the item so I was kind of hoping that when someone saw there was an offer for these shorts that they would swoop in and pick up the shorts for the $25. So I sat on the $20 offer just for like 12 hours maybe, and I wasn't getting any traction. No one else was interested, so I decided to take the offer. I've sold a few pairs of Hottie Hot shorts from my daughter's closet, and you know, it's like when they have been well-loved, I am not looking to be super competitive as far as price points are concerned. $20 on a pair of shorts that I bought at the bins. That's to me like a nice profit. I will make $16. I probably have a dollar into them. So yay. I hope she enjoys them. And the last item I have is another bins find. This item is a little bit funny. So there are hard item bins in like separate from the clothing bins. And I went to the bins over the holidays with my daughter who was home from college. And I walked in the door and there were seven boxes of these unopened Lego Minecraft. And it caught my attention. Now the boxes do have some, you know, they were kind of, I don't want to say damaged, but they're a little bit crushed. So they're not pristine, like brand new Lego sets, but they are factory sealed. So back to my hard goods. I have seen grown men before picking out little tiny Lego pieces and putting them like in their hand or like in a little cup that they picked from the bins. And I walked in the door, these were sitting on a stool and there were literally seven of them new in box and no one wanted them. I mean, it was like a super bustling day at the bins and I was like, I immediately put them in my bag. Like, why does no one want these? So obviously Lego is collectible, Minecraft collectible, new in box, unopened also makes it valuable. These, I want to say, can go for upwards. This set, because it's 160 pieces, I've seen posted for $75. I put them for $27 on Poshmark and on eBay. I didn't have any watchers on eBay, but, and I didn't really have any interest, I guess, on Poshmark, really. Maybe just a couple of likes. 
I think I offered someone $22 for them. Like if someone liked it, I sent out an offer for that. Nothing, no one bought them. So I was contacted by the buyer saying, I want all of them. She's putting them in Easter baskets. And I really had to be careful with this offer because I didn't want to let these go for like $15 each just because they were buying all of them. So I was selling them for 27. I sold all seven of these for $160, which breaks out to be $23 a piece. I offered the buyer a 15% off of bundle, which I have just standard in my closet. And I told them I wasn't really willing to go lower than that because these are selling for upwards of $80. The person could be a reseller and are reselling them themselves. That's fine. I was happy with getting $160 for two pounds of items from the bin, $1.49 a pound. I invested $3 in these. I made $125 on these and I spent $2. So, you know, sometimes you have to spend 50 to make 100. Sometimes you have to spend $2 to make $125. I didn't reduce the cost of shipping on these. The buyer, she bought, she paid full price shipping and I am super happy with that sale. So that's over $500 in sales in the last 24 hours. I am super excited about that. I'm so glad you guys have come back and I'm going to add this to my February What Sold playlist. I started tinkering around on my YouTube channel and if you haven't subscribed, please do give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. Hope you guys are all doing well. Up next, clips of what I sold in the next few days. Packing up some Friday afternoon sales. This vintage straw bag with leather handles and silver rivets sold for $35. A pair of Stuart Weitzman suede heels. A Perlazumi cycling jersey for women. The heels sold for 26, Pearl Azumi sold for 20, and a Liberty of London dress. It's just a mini dress. This sold for $38. Nice Friday afternoon. Confession, I really don't like selling suede. I love selling interesting items, but I hate when there are weird shapes. So I combined two priority boxes to be able to ship the straw vintage bag. Shipping out some items that sold. First up, Dansko Professionals. New with tags, Helly Hansen leather gloves. Made well, cropped, pop over. This was in my closet forever. I think I let it go for like 12 bucks. I'm so happy it's gone. Bye Made Well. The one, the only Justin. New with tags, had this in my closet for $8 to $12 for months, up the price to $28, it sold in a week. H&M coveralls, one piece suit, was in my closet for about 24 hours, sold for I think $28. A pair of vintage Orvis terry cloth two piece pajama set. Let's quickly talk numbers. I ended February with $2,411 in sales for 65 items, which is $37 approximately per item that I sold. I am super happy with those numbers. February was my best month yet. Even with everything that happened with Poshmark, I am super happy to end the month this way. And come here. I have a oh, special guest star appearance <laughs> from Lou who actually wants my hat again today. Louis, say hi. Good boy. Good boy. Thank you. Thank you. You can't have my hat. You can't have my hat. My hair is a mess. My hair is a mess. <laughs> yeah, you're cute.